Hey everybody. So this video we'll talk about appending to our linked list. And rather than diving into the code, we'll just work on the whiteboard this time and kind of plan out what our pseudocode is going to look like, okay? So, appending to the list. Um, let's follow our mantra on this one, okay? And let's plan what we're going to do. And then let's also break it down in terms of input, compute, and then output, steps one, two, and three. First, get your inputs. Second, do your computation. Third, produce your output, or if there is any, right? So um, th those three steps don't just apply to like reading files and doing something and spitting out something to the screen. It could also apply to methods or function calls because methods and function calls have input. That's its parameters, right? And then they compute and then maybe, maybe they return something, but not always, and that's okay. It's still gonna help us to think of things in those terms. So let's plan our list.append around this. So appending to a linked list is conceptually the same as appending to any other list. Um, you are adding it to the end. You're putting an item at the end of the list. Okay, now when we, we're going to write our code, and our code is going to look like list.append when it gets called, and it'll look kind of similar to the add method, but with, you know, a key difference. So, what do we do? Um, what are you going to do? The first step is, you're going to, you know, get your data, get your input. Well, what is your input? Your input is going to be the function, the method parameter, the data item. So you need to make, uh, first thing we probably need to do then is make a node uh, for the item, for the data, right? First step, make a node for the data. Now I want to get it into the list in the right spot. Now, your linked list class, it, again, it only knows three things, the head, the tail, and the length of its list, of a number of items inside. All right, so um, what are the scenarios? Again, you're gonna, it's gonna be useful to think of each one of these methods in terms of like special scenarios. Well, one scenario is um, the list, has uh, it has some items, so uh, its length is greater than zero. Okay, so it's got some items in it. How are you going to append to a list that already has items in it? Well, you know, you, you've already got a list. I'm not going to draw a whole bunch of stuff here in any great detail, but you've already got a list with some stuff in it, right? And the head of the list is up here, and the tail is down here, okay? Well, where do you want to append? Right? You append at the end of the list. Well, you have a reference to the end of the list. It is called the tail, right? So, how do you append? Um, you want to put, right, you want to put the new guy down here, right, at the very end, right, which means what? How do we get the new guy there? You got to put the current tail in the list, tell them to point to the new guy. I'll, I'll call this guy new right here. So you gotta take the current tail, point it to the new guy. So I'll say point current tails next, right? The node at the tail has a data and a next to the new node, right? And then, and then what? Then you need to change, the tail doesn't belong to the second to last guy, it belongs to the one you just inserted. 
So you got to update the tail to point to new, right? And when I say po point to, update it to point to, I'm just saying reassign the value that variable to get the new node, right? So tail dot next is new, and tail gets new, right? This will make the link. Okay, so um, that would take care of that scenario. And then the next scenario would be, well, list has a length equal equal to zero. Okay, if you are you are appending to an empty list. Well, what happens when you append to an empty list? You know, both the head and the tail need to point to the new item, okay? Just like that. Just like it was for add, same thing, okay? Um, cool, uh, what else do we have to do? Update the size. Can't remember to do, uh, forget to do that. If we're adding and removing things, one of the last things you need to do is update the size of the list, okay? All right. Um, I think that gets us there. We've got kind of our input step, we've got our computations, and then our what's our output? Are we returning anything? No. Whenever you append to a list, you do not return anything. List.append does not return anything. So we're done. Okay, so here's kind of the, the pseudo steps, the steps of our algorithm. Looks kind of similar to add. Uh, I'm going to leave it to you to implement it. And next time, we're going to talk about something a little more challenging, which is searching the list. That's going to be our first case where we have to traverse or walk the list. All right, see you then.